We're going to start this puppy up. Clear? Prop? And welcome back to Tip of the Week. This week we're going to start our very first installment of a new series entitled What's Inside of That? This is where we're going to explore what is inside of some of the more common devices that seem somewhat complicated. Get behind the panel, so to speak, and, and see what makes them work. We're going to start off this week with a Dynon avionics panel. These are very popular and many of us have wondered what's really inside of that. Is it just the screen? So let's get started and see what's inside of that. To assist us in understanding the workings of a Dynon panel we are visiting Wheels and Wings. This is a business that specializes in builder assist services for popular kit aircraft. Installing custom panels is one of their many services. Herman, the proprietor, was kind enough to educate us on the Dynan. They are located on Florida's east coast, and you can give Herman a shout if you need help with your home build. They can help you get your project off the ground. Our objective is to show builders what components go into installing a modern glass panel. We are not endorsing or promoting Dynan, but this model is very popular at the present time. The principles are generally typical for other brands. The first thing to understand is that the electronic components that make the glass panel function go way beyond the display panel that is visible to the pilot. That is why we are going to remove this display to show how compact its size is and then to look at the supporting devices behind it. And now we're going to look behind the panel and we're going to first note that there is a shelf that holds all sorts of components that actually make that Dynon panel work. And Herman here is going to help us determine what these modules are and what all these wires do that directly make that panel do what it does. And the first thing I'm noticing, Herman, is this gold box here with all of the uh, connectors in it. What does that do? This is a pre-made wiring harness control box with the white harnesses made by Approach Systems, which um, are pre-made wiring and tested wiring harnesses to speed up your install of your avionics. And if we didn't have that box, there would be a lot more complicated wiring and it would just take longer to put this all together? That is correct. You can make your own wiring harness. You, you buy the, the wiring from Dynon and then you have to crimp your own uh, connectors and be sure that you do everything the right way so you end up with a working panel, well, which that, is perfectly to do. That makes sense. That's very good. It okay. takes a lot of time. And what about this box here? That is the receiver for your ADSB traffic and weather. Okay, so that's on the screen, all the little airplanes show up with the pointing which direction they're going and their altitude, etc.? That is correct. Okay. Yes. And I see an antenna connector BNC on one side there. Correct, that goes to a separate uh, receiver antenna for the ADS-B signals. Okay, gotcha. How about on the other side of our gold box? That is our ADS-B out box and Dynon uses the 1090 system which is the international approved uh, system so you can fly internationally uh, in comparison to the 978 which is only a national frequency so you cannot go over the border okay so our transponder then is uh, monitored and set up right from our Dynon screen and that's the box it talks to in order to make that happen. That is correct. Okay, so we don't have separate switches, use all the touch screen capability on the Dynon screen. That, yep. That's really nice. Okay, and how about, I see a box way in the back there, let's see if I can see it. That's the same color box but that's your COM box, that's your radio. Okay, 
So that's the radio. And again, the radio we're going to control as far as frequency and standby and all of that through the Dynon screen. And that's the actual radio that we never see uh, from the screen then. That, that, that's the amazing. remote, the remote control. Yeah, you can call it a remote. Uh... A remote radio, right, right. Yep, and I see the connectors on the side there. Okay, and what about this black box. Now that black box really is not part of the Dynon system. This here, this is the bus manager. Um, we choose to install it because we are using dual batteries and dual fuel pumps. Um, this, uh, you can select which battery you start on, or on both, and also it's pre-programmable for fuel pressure, so in case one pump fails, then the other pump comes in automatically. Okay. If you, if you don't realize it, as we are dealing with a, with a your power engine who is uh, reliable on fuel pumps on fuel and pump. electricity. Exactly. Okay. Now, obviously, our engine, you mentioned all of the parameters of temperature and RPM and all of that has to be monitored from our Dynon screen, and I bet you we need an interface for that, and I bet I'm going to go to the other side of the uh, panel here. Okay. I know this is our glove box, but right behind the glove box there. That is the EMS for the Dynon indeed. That box is uh, calculating and transferring all the engine parameters in a signal which goes through via this white wire to the screen and that shows up with all your temperatures and all pressures. Okay, and those sensors are probably getting fed in through these very sophisticated yes. cables here. The, the brown wires are for your EGTs and your CHTs and all the other cables are for the different sensors. Sensors, gotcha. And that all is going to go show up on the screen of the Dynan also then. Okay. Right. And are we missing anything We have a else? little backup battery on this side. There was a black box you saw next to the transponder. Let me come around. All right. In case you uh, lose power, if something happens, we have a, a backup battery here, which keeps your screen alive for at least half an hour, uh, depending on how much energy you're using for other components. And I know that's important because if that screen goes out, just about everything we've talked about would maybe not go inoperative, but we wouldn't know. Correct. Uh, uh, and that's one of the reasons we have a separate radio control head, so you still can um, select your radio frequencies. Uh, so, in case you lose your screen, you still can talk to people and tell them about your situation. Um, next to the radio, we got the, uh, co um, the comp panel, your intercom panel, with a separate music input, so you can operate that. Okay. The autopilot, yeah, this plane gets an autopilot, this is the autopilot control head, and we have a separate knob panel here to adjust your barometric pressure, your altitude, and the track you want to fly. So yeah, and I'm going to a picture of that. Otherwise, you have to go in the screen and do, and do multiple menu selections. This makes it way easier to quickly go um, and make the adjustment. You can control the whole autopilot also in the screen, but then you have to go back to your screen in different uh, pages. It's way easier to do it straight on okay. the panel. Okay, so that's clearly backup. As well as you were mentioning the radio and the intercom up there, even though that shows up on the screen, you have manual control over that if you need that to. That is correct. Gotcha. When you look at the screen, you see uh, several switches, and only we get three fuses here, two for the fuel pump and one for the computer. This is only for the engine. All the other breakers are in the VPX box. This is a programmable box. It's the VPX power system, which uh, we are also installing. And you program that from your main screen on your Dynan. Uh, okay, so the Dynan is actually replacing the physical panel with all the breakers and switches because it's electronically, through a visual interface, controlling and reporting on those breakers throughout the aircraft. That is correct. Gotcha. And that box below is the guts that actually makes that happen and talks to the yes. screen. Yes. That okay. is, this box does, does the same as the EMS box. It, it, it displays on the screen. You give a comment on the screen, and then the box will 
change that. Into so you could actually uh, turn a breaker off or reset a breaker from yes. the screen. That is correct. Isn't that amazing? And uh, wow. And here is another box hidden away inside the fuselage. Notice the connections. There's one for the pitot static and angle of attack system. And at the other end is a cable that goes to our network hub. And the purpose of this box is to produce our AHERS display, that is for the altitude and heading system, along with the compass. There's an electronic compass built into that box, and that produces the information for this display. So, in summary, that panel you brought out was mostly for display. The parts that do all of the functions are really in these different boxes you pointed out behind, and that's why we had to build a tray. I say we. You built the tray and made all of this happen, and uh, uh, that's in one way very complex, but at least now we know what's inside of that, that being the panel that we all look at all the time on an aircraft, and I always knew there was a lot going on back there, and I think we have a little better understanding now. And there you have it. Now we know a little bit more about what's behind those ubiquitous avionics panels from Dynan. I can hardly wait till our next item that we're going to break apart and see exactly what's inside of. Well, until then, please, everyone, back to building.